lights are on. Garage, as you know, we pride ourselves here in trying to feature every kind of vehicle around supercars, uh, goofball micro cars, and this is a really unusual one. This is a Toyota Land Cruiser fire truck, appears to be a 1989 model. Now, you might remember Brian Corsetti, he was on here a while back. He was a Land Cruiser guy. Remember, he had all those, here, take a look. Well, he's the one that brought us this one. Let's find out more about it. Brian, come on in. How are hey, you? Good hey, to see Jay, you again. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming back. This is yeah. uh, about an unusual, uh, it's a Land Cruiser fire truck. Yeah. Was it built by Toyota? Was it one of those deals where it goes off to a separate manufacturer? What's the story? So uh, Toyota built this for uh, to be a fire truck. Uh, they nicknamed it Bubble Top, and then they sent it off to Morita that put the pumps on it. They painted it fire engine red and then put the... Uh, the Japanese uh, gold flake, uh, right. traditional ga Japanese gold flake. Now the Morita, is that a Japanese company? It's in a Japan? company, yeah, Japan? that does that converts all their fire trucks over there. You can get fire extinguishers, hoses, things okay. like that. Okay, very cool. So it's based on a standard Land Cruiser platform. Wheelbase is the same, right? This model was available to public uh, other than the United States. So this is a very unique model, obviously right-hand drive, but it's got beefier axles. Right. It's got the uh, 3F engine, inline six. It's a five-speed H55F uh, five-speed from Toyota. So you said it was exported. So I was not it was Japan, which is right-hand drive. What, Australia, New Zealand? Australia where? had these, um, Colombia, South America. Uh, not necessarily the bubble tops, but the, the setup, the whole setup with the uh, uh, five-speed, the inline-six, the 3F engine. Well, I understand why Japan would have a smaller fire engine. You know, tight streets, smaller country, things are more compact. I understand that. But when they export them to places like Australia, What's the advantage to it? Well, first of all, the, the Toyota is known for being bulletproof. The right. engines will, will right. outlast any uh, chassis or plastic piece that they have on it. I'm not sure if they had these fire trucks in Australia or South America. I know that this particular model is just a Japanese oh, okay. fire truck. But the whole setup of the FJ62 right-hand drive with the five-speed transmission uh, was definitely something that was um, in South American and, well, specifically Australian yeah. models. And how much more does this weigh? It's carrying quite a bit of weight now, isn't it? Well, um, yeah, it, it weighs about 4,600 pounds. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. No, so it's no. a Dodge Charger, right? Okay, yeah. It doesn't have a water tank. It doesn't carry water. Right? No, it doesn't. It just, you take these and you dump them into a body of water, a river, okay. a lake, and then it pumps the water out. Obviously, it sifts it through here, and then it, and here's the, uh, you connect the hoses to here. It also connects to a fire hydrant which is the intake for the fire. Well, this is fascinating to me because it seems so Japanese. In America, it would be a wire mesh, but it's bamboo. It's wicker, yeah, or bamboo, wicker, bamboo, yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of, that's kind of. So fish, I guess, don't get up in it. I yeah. guess that's unusual, okay. Interesting. All right, obviously, writing is all in Japanese. Everything is in Japanese. This is off, this is on. I had to learn some of this because in order to work these, obviously, this is the throttle, but this was like a, I had to get a translator. It means do not turn this off unless the red light's on. You know, okay. like that, I guess, could have been an issue. But. Well, here's a dumb question. Are these universal fittings to the fire truck threads from America? For no, example, totally I... Totally different. Oh, it is. Because I have a 1911 fire truck over there. Which is amazing. Yeah, it's I know. huge. Yes, but that, every piece of firefighting equipment on that fits a modern fire truck. The thread, pitch, everything's really? exactly the same. That's cool. And I just wanted, so it's not universal. This no. is some metric thread. Or something. Yeah, it is, and you okay. can't, it's, I can't find a hose. It's so you can only fight Japanese fires. Yeah, it's right. The fire's got to be in Japanese <laughs> or else. You, you can't, uh, yeah. You, you, you screw. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's walk us around. All right. Let's see, what else is unusual? Beefier tires, stronger wheels, or that's yeah, the standard? It, 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 I don't know, you tell me. These are original 1989 tires. I mean, should I have gotten them? 
No, no, but I'm looking at those lugs. What is that? How many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lugs. Six lugs. Standard. Okay. Um, you know, is that a standard a six lug or is it five? Six lug lugs? on a Land Cruiser. Oh, it is. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, okay. They don't have wheel lockers on this as opposed to the normal factory Land Cruiser. Right. Usually, they have a wheel locker, but it does have four wheel drive, and it's yeah. a beast. Uh, the this is uh, non USA, the, which to me this this doesn't. The mirror. It, I can't see anything. I mean. Yeah. You're looking way up here to see out here. It's just right. so this is a, you know. And the bubble top, the siren, or the light looks really modern. as it, But I guess the whole thing is only 30 years old. It's only it's, 30 it's years not, old, 1989. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that is not indicative to this model is this ladder. They had a uh, metal ladder. And yeah, the, that looks like just the Home an, Depot. Honey, I'm going to change a light bulb ladder. It's, it's my not, dad's. I don't really see. Well, hundreds of firemen no. climbing over. I gotta say, it's like the cheapest ladder. Did, did you get that from your house? This is my dad's <laughs> painting ladder as a kid. But it's a 1980s ladder. It's a, oh, it's an 80s ladder. Yeah. So you, you've had a ladder historian document yeah, the ladder. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's but it's good. usually a metal ladder. They just didn't allow yeah. us to export yeah. it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you know what's interesting too? I noticed that this bit of filigree on here. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a decal, but it's not hand painted. No, this uh, this is all metal, uh, gold flake and decal that is traditional for a Japanese fire truck. This came out of a town, Yokosaka. Yokosaka, I think, was right outside. Yes, Yokosaka, of course. <laughs> you you, you <laughs> could say anything; you would it'd be fine. You could say Kawasaki; I wouldn't know. So that's fine. But I mean, you know, it's interesting. I mean, the Japanese have such an eye for detail and artwork. I would have thought, rather than a decal, like in America, the guys, that's all they do is do this elaborate, you know, work, and, and it's beautiful. It's interesting that, because it seems so, when you look at like a Toyota Century or one of those cars, right. there's these little bits of fine, yeah, detail. kind of whalebone made things, you know, and all yeah. this kind of cool <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that it would just be a, a decal. I believe the earlier fire trucks, the FJ40, uh, the 45, uh, had that decal, right, um, okay. the details on it, but this didn't. Now in Japan, would this be the standard size for fire truck, or did they? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So they don't yeah. use the big giant ones like. Not we that do. I'm aware of. Uh, they might now, but yeah. at the time they didn't. This was decommissioned in 2015. Oh, so that's fairly recent. Fairly though, new. Yeah. It's got uh, 18,000 kilometers on it, which is what like 12,000 miles. Right. This what do you like about it? What do I like about it? Well, I, I like that it's a fire truck. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just different thing. I wonder what this platform here for. Why would you be standing on the front of the vehicle? Um, I, I think this there was some kind of winch or something that was on. Oh, that it. makes sense. You okay. know, uh, for for or or an additional siren right. for the front. Uh, this was an international bumper for the FJ62. Okay. So again, a lot of this stuff that's not in America is standard. For, well, they didn't have this. this Let's on open it. the hood. Just yeah, to you want take to. a look. Uh, Where am I? Here we go. There's a thing right here. Wow, I mean, it looks pretty brand new under the hood here. Yeah. Is this about the last? A carburetor up to 89, that seems really weird. That must be Japanese. Because we were out of carburetors by yeah. mid 80s, early yeah. 80s. Even. This is rare. I, it, it definitely is just, a, a, I believe, only existed in Japan and I think Australia. But this is the. Uh, the 3F engine with the carburetor, um, it's, it's petrol, obviously. And why carburetor, for the simplicity or? Uh, you know, it's a great question. I think, you know, just to make it easier, it's easier to work on, it's, yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, the, the other alternative would be diesel in Japan, right? which would be an HJ, so the FJ is for pet gas, the HJ is diesel, and BJ is, is the four-cylinder diesel. Something I find interesting, is this is a different color than the exterior? This is freeborn red. Uh, this is a factory color. Okay. And so this is the color of the truck. Okay. And so when they bring it in, they the first thing they do is paint it, and it's not really a good paint job, believe it or not. But okay. it, it so they paint it. So Toyota fire didn't paint this. No, sir. No. So it's converted by okay yeah. by Morita again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something interesting. That looks like a, just a standard socket. I, I, I saw that too, and I don't know why. You know, I, I but it looks like an electrical socket you'd have in your house. It's not like a power plug or even a, you know. You know, we can. 
try to plug it in and see what happens, I guess. I think that could be for like a radio or something in oh, the middle a of fire. Or something. Searchlight, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you've got two batteries. Is there a bigger alternator on it because of it, or is this standard? Standard alternator. alternator. Um, this is to work the siren, the lights. This one is. This is for the engine. Right. This is for the lights. This is accessory drive. Okay. Accessory drive, yeah. Okay. Both are hooked up to the alternator. Yeah. But is it's, this the only one in the country? To my knowledge, the this version, most of them are diesels. This is like one, I think there's one other one. Now, did you import it? No, a guy named Stuart did, and we had to go through Texas. Right. Uh, we imported it through Texas, and, uh, and then Stuart, we shipped it here. This is... Uh, I had to get a day pass for this, but um, it does not pass California smog, so oh, it's, okay. it's a... Well, sure, Calif with a 89 with a carburetor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, I don't drive it that much, and when I do, I get a permit for it. It's parade vehicles and stuff. Right, We get right. Santa Claus on the back a lot. Yeah, it's interesting that the Japanese would have Santa Claus on the back. Uh, all right, let's see, uh, what else can we have? Uh, anything on this side that's different from the other side? Or is it uh, so it's dual pumps, one pump for one side, okay. one for the other. And uh, how many firemen would ride in this? How many, would you have like five people, two in the front, three in the back? And, and are people hanging off the back as they go to a fire like, you it all depends, but five people would sit in the in, inside, and okay. then usually two in the back, one to, 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 to monitor each side of the pump Okay, is usually the setup. From what I know, I mean, it could be different in different towns. Is it drums all the way around, or is it just... Uh, front disc brakes, okay. drums in the back. Okay. Uh, I think it's got a 411 uh, gear ratio in the back. Uh, okay. Let's go to the back of the vehicle here. Okay, it looks pretty standard fire truck from back here. Yeah, so these are um, original. Right nozzles right they just come right off and right. you know, they connect to the hoses um you know a fireman would sit back here so one guy sits back here yeah okay uh one sometimes two you know this is the hold bar they just right. ride on the back they can jump on uh standard hoses wires you know tool tool kit and stuff yeah. axe that's another thing that's that's my mom's fire extinguisher. That's your mom's fire extinguisher. But it's from 1989, so. Oh, okay. So it's you got ridiculous. your dad's stepladder, your mom's. So you, you want to take a little bit of your parents with you every time. You yeah, that's right. Out. Yeah, yeah. All right. Maybe mom and dad could sit back here. Mom yeah. could sit there, and dad good. could do gymnastics. Yeah. <laughs> I think. And so up in there, there's the lid to the to the gas tank. It's actually a smaller tank than a normal FJ62. Really? Yeah, it's a it's a 14 gallon tank as okay. opposed to a 19 gallon. So you have to fill it up there. At the top. Uh, it fills in on the side, but okay. that's access to to maintain the pumps. Uh, and then there's also a maintaining uh, thing for inside the okay. cab. Let's see what. That's like. Okay. And this old area here. Okay. Those. All right. Cool. Yeah, so. Can we look at the inside? Yeah. Oh, I recommend these. I remember these, rather, from the first Godzilla movie. Yeah, that's right. I think Raymond Burr was in that. <laughs> Perry Mason, remember? Yeah. Because this was the type of helmet that when he would breathe fire, they would go like this. And you got to wear the helmet to protect yourself from right, Godzilla, right? right? Okay. And this is the symbol on the front. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And where did you get these? Did these come with the truck? Uh, I got these later um, after we imported, exported the truck. Oh, I actually said these but, are your mom and dad's helmets when they were. Yeah. <laughs> That's for a, a Halloween party. Okay. And pretty much the standard Toyota interior, right? Everything is standard for a Japanese FJ62, correct? Okay. Um, this one doesn't, it's, it's stripped down so it doesn't have AC, it doesn't have a radio, it just has heater. Again, the bubble tops had an elevated rear seat. Okay. Uh, and then there's some really cool compartments in the in the headliner and stuff that you can do. And it's called bubble top because of this, not because of this. Correct? Right, yeah, yeah. This they, they okay. nicknamed it the you know, the locals nicknamed it right, bubble right, top. Right. Yeah. Okay. But that was never a factory designation, right? Right, oh, correct. Okay. All right. And all the standard firefighting gauges and interesting. Now these are in English. Isn't that weird? Yeah, so this is English, this is English, this is English. This is the gasoline tank, by the way. Right. Uh, but all this other stuff is, I don't know, is Japanese. I wonder, I wonder why that is. Obviously, you got the gauges from America for whatever Probably, reason. Probably, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, you check your oil for the pump here. You oh, know. I see if that's full, you're okay. Here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I left everything as is. Right. Uh, you know, there's a little rust on it, nothing yeah. cancerous. But this is how it was. You know, it was a, you know, 
Yokosaka is almost on the on the ocean there, so right. it's going to get a lot of. Is know, that a huge town or a small town or what? Do you know? Uh, medium. It's smaller than Tokyo. Of right. Oh, okay. but it's a, it's a it's a city. It's not. It's a, right outside Tokyo. But it's interesting that this would be the standard size of a fire truck in Japan. Yeah, isn't that neat? Okay. Uh, I like this fire truck. Uh, I've always wanted to own a bigger fire truck, right. but this fit in my garage. So right. and I love right. Land Cruisers. So I said, why not? Okay. Very cool. Well, can we take it for a ride? Yeah. Is there any Japanese fires going let's, on? Let's see it. Yeah, let's see. Oh, my God. The Benihana. It looks like it's on fire. <laughs> the the siren. Siren. That's not it. the right-hand drive stick. I, I drive right-hand drive, but it make a difference to me. Same thing. It can get a little top-heavy. Yeah. You know, the thinner tires. I wish they had these models in the United States. They're just better for some reason. Better than what? The, so the, the one that you drove last time, it's the, the fuel injection. It's automatic. I mean, yeah. that was a nice car, but this one seems to perform better. Uh, and four-wheel drive and off-road and all that. Is this four-wheel drive, this one? Yes, sir. Oh, so you get, uh, oh that's all cars. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, not full-time four-wheel drive. No, no, we're yeah. in two-wheel now. Yeah. But they keep it all basic. But it's interesting. These fire trucks don't seem to have the the paramedic equipment. It just seems to be primarily fighting fires. Just for fires. We hear fire trucks are getting cats out of trees and right. you know and every other conceivable kind of thing. It's interesting in 30 years it's only done 18,000 kilometers which is about 12,000 miles. About 12,000 miles. So really you figure every incident was probably within five or six miles of the fire station, right? Right. Right. I mean like that. I do get some uh, some nods to some firemen that you know if I pull next to a fire truck there's a lot of uh, Snickering, you know, yeah. they just kind of laugh. The the one thing on the H55 F5 speed yeah. is that the first gear is really really short. It's the granny gear, yeah. It's the granny gear, and uh, it could be a little long. You could almost start it in second. Uh, the person that actually got me fired up about this is my fiance. So I'm getting married in May. Well, then you won't have any land. Well then, yeah, that's funny you mention that. She's like the biggest supporter. But ironically, your prediction, I'm down to six or 12, which is interesting. But she's like the whole brains behind it, and she's been the biggest supporter. Yeah. But it just so happened to work out like that. I want to go into more resto mods. What's interesting with this one, we had to do a full radiation test to export it into the United States. Right, and because of that, was it the Fukuyama plant? Yeah, how you say it? They melted oh. down with the radiation. Yeah, yeah, and they wanted that it, you don't want any fire engine that it's in there. So it came it came with a clean bill of health, including a radiation test. Uh, and then it was shipped out of Kawasai, I can't pronounce it, right outside Tokyo. They shipped right. it out right to Long Beach and shipped right to Texas. And then back to, back to LA. Actually, it doesn't drive any different, really, than any other Toyota. I mean, it feels a bit heavier. Yeah. You know, like you say, you're carrying your weight up high. Can you tell a difference in the power? That feels, you know, it's been so long since I, I've driven a million cars and shit. Yeah. Today. Well, it drives just like a regular Toyota. Yeah. And it's probably faster than a fire truck, actually. Yeah. When you think about it. Yeah. Probably hasn't gone into fifth gear that much. Well, the fact is it only has approximately 10,000 miles for 30 years. I mean, what, what's that? How many miles is that a year? What's that? That's 400 the, miles a year? Four, 400, yeah, about that. Yeah, something like that.
Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a shame. I mean, it, it, the truck. I mean, that's a lot of that's not a lot of miles for a Toyota. No. Have you uh, talked to any Japanese firemen? Have you, anybody? I haven't. You know, you can't find a lot of them in Southern California. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, I've talked to them and uh, I've talked to a lot of regular firemen. Right. They they just you know they call it the mini me. Yeah. Version. But this in Japan is not a small fire truck. It's a fire truck. It's a fire truck, yeah. Yeah. A small fire truck would be like a Honda 600. Right. <laughs> or a Civic. Yeah, yeah, or a Civic. Really. This is a full-size fire yeah. truck in Tokyo. And rightfully so. I mean, it's very small. Well, Tokyo's got high-rise buildings. Obviously, they must have hook and ladders and stuff. Well, now they have these bigger... They're, they're, yeah. They look like they look like a Zuzu uh, box trucks. Right, right, yeah. You know, Four-door Zuzu box, box yeah. trucks. Now, Morita, the company that made all the accessory equipment, yeah, are they American as well as strictly Japan? I hadn't heard that name. As far as I know, when I looked them up, they uh, were based in Japan. Right. And they have uh, they have a Toyota city in Japan, which is uh, about four hours outside of Tokyo. Right, right. Um, I'm sure they have an office in the United States. I just don't. I don't know that for sure. Have you managed to pick up any uh, photographs or paraphernalia of this car in action? This fire truck. Not in this particular truck. Right. Uh, I've been looking for that. I, a lot of the trucks that I've been researching are the FJ70s, right. FJ45s. There's an FJ55 version, and I can get a ton of photos on those trucks. But for some reason. The FJ62, it's, I, I can't, it's, just, it's not a lot of documentation on it. Right, that's interesting. Uh, and like I said, they only made the FJ62 for three years. For, so for them to have a fire truck, yeah. you know, it it's, well, makes there must, it even more rare. There must be some uh, movie, Japanese movie footage or something featured in these things. Yeah, you'd think. And I'll bet models, I'll bet you, if, uh, I can't remember the name of the Japanese modeling company, they do beautiful models. I bet there's a model of this fire truck. I think this is the best looking fire truck out of all the the Land Cruiser fire trucks. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting. I wonder if they will continue to do this because most fire engines now a purpose built. Like, right. They're not, there's no reason to have something. You know, there's so much modern equipment you have to have with chemical fires and, you know, just all different kinds of terrain and stuff that most, up until probably the 70s or 80s, fire trucks were based on regular trucks. Right, right. Now they're specific, their companies just build fire trucks fire to make trucks. their own heavy. And I imagine it's the same thing in Japan. You yeah. know, I mean, this is nice, but it's still pretty much a regular truck, and it can't do what a, a real fire truck can do, you know? Right. Well, that's probably why they impound their fire trucks now. Yeah. Because they're not, they, they were built for fires. I wonder how many of these were built. Any idea? Uh, the FJ-62, not a lot. Yeah. Um, not a lot, meaning thousands or a few hundred? Or? I mean, I'd say a few hundred. Now, the FJ-60, I would say a few thousand. Right. Which they built those for about a seven-year period, six years in the United States. Um, but these were only made from 1988 to 1990 in right. the States and in Japan. But then they went into 1993 in South America. Yeah. And they didn't have any fire trucks of these in right. South America. But these are very unique, bubble tops. Right. Boy, do I love this truck. It's nice. Yeah. Well, I want to tip my hat to the Japanese firefighters and all firefighters everywhere, actually. These guys do an incredible job. Especially here in LA, you know, we had these horrible fires and these guys just just went to the wall and just did a wonderful job. It was pretty amazing. So it's, it's fun to get to try the equipment that these men and women use, you know? Yeah. And uh, this is fun. I'd never seen a Toyota Land Cruiser uh, fire truck before. In fact, I kind of thought somebody just built it. But this, this is the real deal. It's a real isn't? deal. Cool, Brian. Thank you very much, thank my you, friend. Jane.
Next time I see you, you'll probably be a married man. That's right. Oh, cool. Well, congratulations. Thanks, man. All right, see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>